Mr. and Mrs. Rossett decided to purchase a property. The entire purchase money was to come from the husband's family trust in Switzerland. The trustees insisted that he be the sole legal owner of the house. Both Mr. and Mrs. Rossett worked to renovate the house before they moved in, with Mrs. Rossett carrying out decorating work, obtaining materials and helping plan the renovation. Unknown to Mrs. Rossett, Mr. Rossett was unable to fund everything entirely from the trust fund and took out an overdraft with Lloyds Bank. He defaulted on the repayments and the bank sought possession of the house. Mrs. Rossett claimed that she had an interest in the house that had priority over the banks. The question before the courts was whether Mrs. Rossett was entitled to a share of the ownership of the house, even if Mr. Rossett was the sole legal owner. The House of Lords held that an interest in the house could be gained if there was a common intention between the parties to do so. This could occur through evidence of an arrangement or understanding contained in express discussions between the parties, or alternatively, inferred from the parties' conduct, although it was unlikely that anything less than a direct financial contribution would be sufficient. On the facts, Mrs. Rossett had no interest, as there was no agreement between her and Mr. Rossett, and one could not be inferred from the work she had done. The Supreme Court and Privy Council have since criticised the requirement of a direct financial contribution as unduly restrictive. This is a strong indication of the future direction of the Supreme Court. Get more from the Open University. Check out the links on screen now.